Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Study Assam. We are covering a series in which we will cover biographies of all eminent personalities of Assam. This is important from APSC Main's point of view, especially from APSC Main's paper 6. Even in recent APSC Main's, many questions were asked from this section. In this lecture, we are going to cover the biography of Maniram Devan. Maniram Datta Barua, popularly known as Maniram Devan, was an Assamese nobleman in British India. He was one of the first people to establish tea garden in Assam. A loyal ally of the British East India Company, in his early years, he was hanged by the British for conspiring against them during the 1857 uprising. He was popular among the people of Upper Assam as Kalita Raja. Now let us discuss early life of Maniram Devan. Maniram was born into a family that had migrated from Kannoj to Assam in the early 16th century. His paternal ancestors held high offices in the Ahom court. The Ahom rule had weakened considerably during the Muamoria rebellion 1769 to 1806. During the Burmese invasion of Assam, from 1817 to 1826, Maniram's family sought asylum in Bengal, which was under the control of the British East India Company. The family returned to Assam under the British protection during the early days of the First Anglo-Burmese War, which lasted from 1824 to 1826. The East India Company defeated the Burmese and gained the control of Assam through the Treaty of Yandabu in 1826. Now let us discuss Maniram's role as British associate. Early in his career, Maniram became a loyal associate of the British East India Company administration under David Scott, the agent of the Governor General in North East India. In 1828, the 22-year-old Maniram was appointed as a Tehsildar and a Saristadar of Rangpur. Later, Maniram was made a Borbandar by Purandar Singha the titular ruler of Assam during 1833 to 1838. He continued to be an associate of Purandar's son, Kamleshwar Singha, and grandson, Kandrapeshwar Singha. Maniram became a loyal confidante of Purandar Singha and resigned from the post of Saristadar and Tehsildar when the king was disposed by the British. Now let us discuss the history of tea cultivation in Assam. It was Maniram who informed the British about the Assam tea grown by the Singpo people, which was hitherto unknown to the rest of the world. In the early 1820s, he directed the cultivators Major Robert Bruce and his brother Charles Alexander Bruce to the local Singpo chief Besagam. Charles Bruce collected the tea plant from the Singpos and took them to the company administration. However, Dr. Nathaniel Wallish, the superintendent of the Calcutta Botanical Garden, declared that these samples were not of the same species as the tea plants of China. In 1833, after its monopoly on the Chinese trade tea trade ended, the East India Company decided to establish major tea plantation in India. Lord William Bentick established the tea committee on 1st February 1834, toward achieving this goal, the committee sent out circulars asking about the suitable places for tea cultivation, to which Captain Jenkins responded, suggesting Assam. The tea plant sample collected by his assistant Lieutenant Charlton were acknowledged by Dr. Wallich as genuine tea. When the tea committee visited Assam to study the feasibility of tea cultivation, Maniram met Dr. Walish as representative of Purandar Singha and highlighted the region's prospects for tea cultivation. In 1839, Maniram became the Devan of Assam Tea Company at Nazira, drawing a salary of 200 rupees per month. In the mid 1840s, he quit his job due to differences of opinion with the company officers. By this time, Maniram had acquired tea cultivation expertise, 
he established his own Sindhamara tea garden at Sindhamara in Jorhat, thus becoming the first Indian tea planter to grow tea commercially in Assam. Jorhat later became home to the tea research laboratory Toklai Experimental Station. He established another plantation at Selung in Sipsagar. Apart from tea industry, Maniram also ventured into iron smelting, gold procuring and salt production. He was also involved in the manufacturing of goods like matchlocks, hose and cutlery, etc. Now let's discuss anti-British plot by Maniram Diwan. By the 1850s, Maniram had become hostile to the British. He had faced numerous administrative obstacles in obstabilizing private tea plantations due to the opposition from the competing European tea planters. In 1851, Captain Charles Holroyd, the chief officer of Sipsagar, sees all the facilities provided to him due to a tea garden dispute. Maniram, whose family consisted of 185 people, had to face economic hardship. In 1852, Maniram presented a petition to the Sadar Court, Calcutta. He wrote that the people of Assam had been reduced to the most abject and hopeless state of misery from the loss of their fame, honor, rank, caste, employment, etc. He also criticized the discontinuation of the puja at Kamakya temple which according to him resulted in calamities. He also disapproved of the appointment of the Marwaris and the Bengalis as Mojadars when a number of Assamese people remained unemployed. As a solution to all these issues, Maniram proposed that the former native administration of the Ahom kings to be reintroduced. The judge dismissed the petition as a curious document from a discontented subject and remarked that Maniram was a clever but an untrustworthy person. When the Indian sepoys started an uprising against the British on 10th May, Maniram saw it as an opportunity to restore the Ahom rule. With help from messengers disguised as fakirs, he sent coded letters to Piali Barua, who had been acting as the chief advisor of Khanda Peshwar in his absence. In these letters, he urged Khanda Peshwar Singha to launch a rebellion against the British with the help from the sepoys at Dibrugar and Golaghat. Khanda Peshwar and his loyal men hatched an anti-British plot and gathered arms. The plot was supported by several influential local leaders including Urbidar Barua, Mayaram Barbara, etc. The conspirators were joined by the Subedar Sheikh Bhikun and Nur Muhammad after Kandar Peshwar promised to double the salary of the sepoys if they succeeded in defeating the British. On 29 August 1857, the rebels met at Sheikh Bhikun's residence at Nogora. They planned a march to Jorhat, where Kandra Peshwar would be installed as the king on the day of the Durga Puja. Later, Sip Sagar and Dibrugar would be captured. However, the plot was uncovered before it could be executed. Kandra Peshwar, Maniram and other leaders were arrested. Maniram was arrested in Calcutta, detained in Alipur for a week and then brought to Johat. His letter to Kandar Peshwar had been intercepted by the Special Commissioner Captain Charles Holroyd, who judged the trial. Based on the statement of Haranath Parvatiya Barua, the Daroga of Sipsagar, Maniram was identified as the kingpin of the plot. He and Piali Barua were publicly hanged on 26 February 1858 at the Jorhat Central Jail. Maniram's death was widely mourned in Assam and several tea garden workers struck work to express their support for the rebellion. After his death, Maniram's tea estate were sold to George Williamson in an auction at a throwaway prices. Curiously, 
Williamson could barely enjoy the fruits of his newly acquired tea gardens as workers started leaving the estates. Unable to run the gardens, Williamson went through a change of heart and later sold off the tea gardens, donated the entire proceed to the people of Assam. The Maniram Dewan Trade Center of Guwahati and the Maniram Dewan Boys Hostel of the Divrugar University is named after him. In 2012, the Planning Commission Deputy Chairman Montek Singh Aluwalia announced that he planned to declare tea as the national drink of India to coincide with 212th birth anniversary of Maniram Dewan. I hope you like this video. Please like this video and subscribe my channel in order to receive notification of future biographies of eminent personalities of Assam. Thank you.